Hi, I'm Stan Slav. I want to talk to you today about getting even smarter about culture, and especially about the importance of a woman by the name of Margaret Mead. Now, Margaret Mead was an anthropologist who did a lot of her work studying primitive native tribes in the deepest, darkest jungles of the South Pacific in New Guinea and Samoa. Her first book, the book that brought her to prominence and helped crack the code on culture and unwittingly helped give business its accurate working definition, was called The Coming of Age in Samoa, which is still in print today. What's important about that book, especially, is that she didn't write that book after spending a couple of days in a luxury jungle camp in Samoa and then hustling back to her New York office. She wrote it after living with those natives and understanding intimately who they were and how they saw the world and why they did what they did and chose not to do what they chose not to do. Now in my company, we do the same thing. We've spent over 20 years in intimate study of manager, employee, and even customer cultures, understanding from a cultural perspective why cultures do what they do and why they choose not to do what they choose not to do. And I did that before I ever wrote any of my own books. So to respect culture and to respect Margaret Mead is to respect that she actually went there to do this work. And so I went there. Welcome to the jungles of Samoa. Hey, Stan, wear this pith helmet. Oh, man, I don't do hats. Now, let's assume that you were an anthropologist 100 years ago, crouching in the jungle, spying on a bunch of natives through the weeds as they went about their daily business. And you thought, this isn't even civilization. Here we have a loose group of individuals who mysteriously gather together at the beginning of each day, and then they disperse out into the jungle in no discernible pattern, and then they mysteriously gather back together at the end of each day. And you wonder, what brings these same people back together day after day after day? And when they are together, what's the glue that binds them together? Because you know, if you're gonna hang with the same group of people day after day after day, you have to have some commonly accepted rules of behavior that everybody agrees to obey. You have to have some common rituals for certifying, communicating those rules of behavior that everybody agrees to practice. And you're thinking, how would anybody in this funky little tribe know any of that stuff? There isn't even a single person here who knows how to read. That's not actually that big of a deal. There's not a single person here who even knows how to write. So you're thinking, this isn't civilization at all. This is chaos. Well, Margaret Mead didn't have to worry about that because in Mead's case, the natives stopped pretending that they didn't notice some white woman in a Banana Republic safari outfit hiding out in the weeds. I mean, it is their jungle. If somebody was in your living room behind your couch with a pair of binoculars and a notepad for six months, you'd know she was there. Turns out they knew she was there all the time. They were just screwing with her. There's another book that's famous primarily in anthropological circles called The Fateful Hoaxing of Margaret Mead. It was written by a senior anthropologist who went back many years later to interview this same tribe. And under some pressure and with some free t-shirts and software, they coughed up the truth. And these people don't have cable. This was the most exciting thing to happen to them in years. So did they remember some whacked out woman with a pith helmet and a pencil? Yes, they did. And when they were shown what she had written about them, they basically admitted she got it right. But in this book, they also admitted playing her just a wee bit. One of the things they admit doing in this book is inventing bizarre, complex mating rituals just to see if she would write it down. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mead's book was written after the natives stopped pretending that they didn't notice she was there and invited her in to meet the tribe, coincidentally around dinner time. And in Mead's book, she wrote, this is in fact one of the most thoroughly civilized, heavily ritualized societies I have ever heard of or witnessed. These people, these simple natives, have rules and rituals for everything. How to become a man, how to become a woman, birth rites, death rites, celebratory feasts for the chief, relationships with other tribes, locations of safe watering holes. 
She said even more amazing than that, every single person in this tribe obeys these rules faithfully. Every single person in this tribe practices these rituals consistently and accurately. And they don't really need to know how to read, and they don't even really need to know how to write, because these people know how to tell stories. She called them legends. She said, in fact, there's a chief storyteller in the tribe. It's not the chief himself or herself, but pretty far up in the hierarchy, kind of the CSO, chief storytelling officer, has a corner hut, doing all right for himself. She said, when information comes into the tribe, it comes in through this chief storyteller who spins it into a legend and then whips it out amongst the tribe. And they pick it up and whip it around amongst themselves. She said, even more amazing than that, we are talking about the middle of a jungle clearing in Samoa. There's not a lot of late breaking news here. She said, so the stories that these people have well, they're raggedy old stories. Everybody's heard these stories thousands of times and told these stories thousands of times. She said, but they keep them fresh. They keep them relevant. They keep them urgent by repeating them over and over and over again. Because this is a culture. Whenever you have a group of people who share the same basic lifestyle, environment, and traditions, in Mead's case, all these natives, all in this jungle, all in this tribe, all with this chief, it is their shared beliefs about the rules of survival and emotional prosperity. What does it take for me to survive living in this jungle, in this tribe, with this chief? And then knowing I'm basically gonna be okay, how do I get rewarded emotionally and avoid punishment? And whenever people share the same basic living circumstances, they naturally band together to share these beliefs because the more people looking out for the safe watering hole, the safer it is for everyone. Well, this has immediate relevance to business because in any organizational environment, you have exactly the same conditions they had in that jungle in Samoa. In your organizational environment, you have exactly the same conditions they had in that jungle in Samoa. You have a group of people who all share the same basic lifestyle, environment, and traditions. They all work in your industry. They all work in your company. They all work on your team. They all work for you. So just like in the jungles of Samoa, your employees have a culture. And just like in the jungles of Samoa, that culture is all about their shared beliefs of the rules of survival and emotional prosperity. What does it take for me to keep my job working in this industry, in this company, on this team for you, and knowing that I'm gonna basically be okay, then how do I get rewarded emotionally and avoid punishment? And just like in the jungles of Samoa, your culture communicates these beliefs by telling stories. And just like in the jungles of Samoa, the combined power of these stories decides what your people will do and what they won't do. And just like in the jungles of Samoa, Everybody on your team knows these stories by heart, and they repeat them over and over and over again. Okay, for the big money, who are all of the stories about that your people tell, do you think? Hey, what are you doing here? What? You can't be here, it's my family land. Ah, see that's exactly what I'm talking about. Man, 